Hello, and welcome to the Digital Orphanage. In this episode, I'm back volunteering at the Museum of Computing in Swindon. The museum's been closed since the lockdown in March, and a museum without visitors feels incomplete. But go anywhere in the museum when it's quiet, and just listen. After a while, you will hear the echoes of all our conversations. I'm here sorting through the collection, looking for excess stock we can sell, to both free up space for new items and to bring in much needed funds. We have more Dragon 32s than we need, and this doesn't include two on display and two others I've since discovered. This will be easier if I take them home to process, as it will take some time. Seeing them lined up like this makes me wonder if I've bitten off too much. I hope Mrs TDO doesn't mind me taking over the dining room like this. So where to start? Well, before I test any of them, I want to make sure all 11 power supplies are good. The UK has one of the safest AC power plugs in the world, but prior to 1994, manufacturers did not have to provide one fitted. So always check the plug before trusting some unknown person knew what they were doing. You are likely to find issues like the cord not being gripped and the conductors not trimmed to the correct lengths or a 13 amp fuse where the Dragon should have a 3 amp one fitted. Or how about a terminal screw rattling around inside with a loose earth wire. As well as the wrong fuse, someone couldn't even be bothered expending a few extra seconds needed to use the cord grip. So the first task is to replace the old plugs with modern versions, with the conductors cut to length, a 3 amp fuse fitted, and of course, the all important cord grip being used. With the mains power end good, I can turn my attention to the computer end. The Dragon uses a DE9 connector, and with so many supplies to check, I've whipped up a simple breakout dongle and printed the expected connections and voltages on the front. Before plugging into the mains I can use this to first check the continuity is as expected, to be confident nothing has shorted. With the supply plugged into the mains I can then check the AC voltages are within tolerance. A couple of the supplies showed an issue with pin 2 having no continuity to pins 1, 6 or 7. The connector is held together with two front screws that need to be removed. but it also has a cord clamp screw that needs to be loosened. This allows the socket to be pushed out of its housing.
On both connectors, the solder joint to pin 2 had been broken. I suspect the cord had been tugged. The Dragon uses two pins for each side of the 8.5 volt winding. A simple case of a little flux and a carefully placed soldering iron to resolve. followed by a retest. Over the lifespan of the Dragon 32, there were two different types of power supplies. This larger generic labelled version, followed by a custom moulded version. Unfortunately, all these power supplies have been left in the packaging at some point, and the plasticizers in the cord have reacted with the polystyrene, causing it to melt onto the cord, and it does not come off easily. To clean these I'm going to use an old rag and some white spirit. I could use IPA, but I want to save what supplies I have of that. And I've come out into the garage for better ventilation, and to save annoying Mrs TDO with white spirit smells. With a bit of gentle rubbing it comes off reasonably easy. And only about another 25 metres of cord to go, over the 11 power supplies. In some places the residue is quite thick and a soft credit card type plastic can be used to scrape it off. In this case, an old mobile phone SIM card. This won't scratch the cord or damage it like a metal tool would. With the initial clean completed and the sticky residue removed, I can give them a good wipe down with some gentle cleaner. This removes any white spirit and remaining dirt. On textured plastic, I find a gentle scrub with a brush helps lift the dirt out where it can be wiped away. with the lovely clean and working power supplies we must end part one. 
please join me in part two, where I get to play with the nest of dragons and see what treasures they might be hiding. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>